A brave mountaineer is trapped in a crevice in the middle of the Grand Canyon for several days and must do the unthinkable to get out alive. That's why today, 127 hours. Remember that if you like the videos, you can support the channel by liking, subscribing, and activating notifications. It's free and it really helps me to keep growing. Now, let's recap. This is the story of Aaron Ralston, an adventurer about to leave on his next trip to the Grand Canyon. So he starts his route in his car while recording himself, saying that he will go alone, accompanied by the night and his favorite music. At one point, he leaves the car parked and we see him start the journey on his bike, which he drives like a real expert. And so he goes through the place, and although he is four and a half hours away from reaching the area he wants to travel, he increases the speed to get there in less time. Shortly after, he falls on the road but doesn't think much of it, and doesn't hesitate to keep going until he reaches a tree where he secures the bike, because he has to walk the rest of the way. Then he begins to climb the mountains, and soon after he sees two girls that catch his attention, so he decides to approach them and discovers that they are lost. Our adventurer offers to guide them, and we officially meet Christy and Megan, who with some embarrassment and fear for being a stranger, accept his help. They follow the path together as they begin to talk to get to know each other a little better, and when they reach a specific point, he offers them to take a shortcut that will make the journey more fun and exciting. So they enter a rather narrow path and there we learn that Aaron is an engineer, but is dedicated to making these trips, and shortly after he tells them that everything will be fine just before dropping in the middle of the rocks to the deepest. The girl's first reaction is fear, but they hear Aaron fall into the water and then he starts singing to tell them it's okay. Then they decide to trust him and also drop into the lake inside the cave, making this the happiest moment of the whole movie. While they are there, Aaron takes the opportunity to record some videos with them, and they also take the last souvenir picture before saying goodbye, since the girls will follow another path, but first they invite him to a party that will be held the next day. So Aaron advances alone and enters another narrow path to take more pictures, and when he tries to go down very carefully, the rock that was holding him falls, making him fall too, and his hand is trapped. Despite this, the guy seems to keep calm, even though we see a big blood stain on the rock. And when he makes the effort to get his hand out of there, he realizes that he is actually trapped, so he starts to get a little desperate. There he tries to kick the huge rock to move it, and also uses his shoulder to push it somehow. But he doesn't manage to do anything. Then he thinks of shouting the names of his new friends, but taking into account that he is in a deep spot in the middle of the desert, nobody hears him. After a few minutes and being a little calmer, he decides to arrange all his things on the rock that has trapped him, to know what he can use, and there he realizes that he's running out of water. He also checks that his camera and flashlight are working properly, and takes his small knife to start filing the huge rock. But at one point he drops it, and after much effort he manages to recover it. He then realizes that his hand is losing sensitivity, which is not good news, and that the knife he is using is not very sharp. Still, he continues to do so as the hours pass and it gets dark. Aaron is still trapped, but without giving up, he continues filing the rock, and after 11 hours of being there, he decides to drink most of the water he has left, because he can't stand the thirst anymore. Then he begins to have little flashbacks of his youth in the Grand Canyon, and soon after, he gets the idea to hook a ribbon on an upper rock, but it takes him 40 minutes of trying until he manages to do it, and he uses it to swing on it to rest his legs. At dawn, we see Aaron looking up at the sky in the hope of finding a way out, but the most he manages is that the sun's rays can reach at least part of his body after a long, cold night in the desert. Just at that moment, he begins to remember when in his childhood he first saw the Grand Canyon and was amazed by its beauty. Later, 24 hours after being trapped, he decides to record a video saying that whoever finds his camera can keep it, but he asks him to send the video to his parents. There he begins to tell what happened to him and focuses on the thumb of his trapped hand, which is now blue, so he suspects he has lost it for good. He also says that he has very little food left and only has about 200 milliliters of water, so he has little hope of getting out of there. At that moment, he hears someone's footsteps on the rocks above and starts desperately shouting for help, but this doesn't work and the truth is that we don't know if what he heard was real. So Aaron begins to beg himself not to go crazy in the middle of the solitude of the desert. Hours go by and night comes again, so the temperature begins to drop. And to avoid freezing to death, Aaron uses the ropes and covers his body with everything he has to give himself some warmth. After so many hours, he decides to have dinner with one of the snacks he had in his backpack. While he listens to some music, that also helps him to remember moments of his childhood and youth. But the hunger still doesn't go away, so he decides to take off his contact lenses and eat them. While he remembers the day his mother left him a voicemail and he ignored her, and with this he starts to have memories of special people in his life. It's morning again, and it's already Monday, so he gets the strength to try a new technique. So he uses the rope to try to lift the rock that has trapped him, but he doesn't succeed. This exhausts him a lot, and his mind plays a trick on him, because he begins to remember hundreds of refreshing drinks just to torture himself. 
and the only way to distract himself somehow is to record a new video resuming what he has experienced in the last few hours. And there he tells us that his body is acting weird because his urine had a horrible smell. He also discovers that his arm is what has the rock stuck, so he decides to make a big tourniquet and use his knife to cut his arm, since it's the only way out of there. But when he tries to cut his skin open, he realizes that the knife is not sharp enough and he only manages to get a few small wounds. Don't buy the cheap made in China multi-tool. He remembers that his mother gave him this knife as a Christmas present, but he clarifies that it is not his fault because it was a really good gift, and there he begins to remember his youth with his family. Then in the middle of his tiredness, he drops the bottle with the little amount he had left, causing him to lose half of it. And soon after, he begins to remember when he met a blonde girl with whom he ended up dating. After a while, a big storm starts. So Aaron takes the opportunity to take and save as much water as possible. And although at first it seems to be dangerous because it rains non-stop and the crevice begins to flood, it ends up being a great help because in this way, Aaron can move the rock to get out of there. And in doing so, he manages to climb up the mountain to get to his car. Not caring how bad he feels, he decides to go straight to the house of the blonde girl he was dating. And although Aaron is really hurt, she looks at him with contempt and prefers to slam the door in his face than to help him. And at that moment, he wakes up in tears because it all turned out to be a horrible nightmare. The next day, Aaron starts with good energy and proves it by recording a new video as if he were hosting a TV show. Good morning, everyone! In this video, he pretends to interview himself to apologize to his mom for not answering her call or telling her where he was going. And then we learn that no one knows where he is. Then he himself comes to the conclusion that if his coworker reports him missing today, the police will make him wait until Wednesday to start looking for him, and he will probably be dead by then. In the middle of his speech, we meet a selfish and lonely Aaron who would rather be like this than keep in touch with his family. So he takes advantage of the tape to apologize to them for not valuing them enough and thanking them for the time they spent together. He then decides to drink the few drops of water he has left and begins to feel his heart beating rapidly as more memories come to his mind. And without anesthesia and without much thought, he plunges the knife into his arm with all his strength to prevent the blood from clotting further in his body. Then the hours keep passing and Aaron can't stand the thirst, so he starts to drink his own urine to avoid dehydration. And then he starts to see the last moments of happiness he lived with the girls he met recently. And so he is filled with motivation to keep trying. Later, he wakes up when his arm is surrounded by insects as with the passing of the days, the wound is rotting. And the pain he feels makes him remember the moment when the blonde girl broke up with him in the middle of a match. He then decides to record another video saying that time is passing slowly that his heart is beating very fast and his body heat is dropping rapidly, and he starts having hallucinations with his relatives. He still keeps talking to the camera to tell the girl whose name is Rama that he has been thinking about her a lot. And there he sees his family and friends sitting on a couch to watch him. Then something happens that catches his attention, and that is that he imagines the future moments that he will not be able to enjoy because he is about to die. He sees his future son, and this drives him to desperately keep trying to file the rock. But he doesn't really accomplish much with this, other than to fall down from exhaustion. But later he continues to have visions and bravely decides to break the bone in his arm, so he begins to cut the soft flesh with the knife. And although this seems painful, what really comes next is the most difficult, since with the open wound he has no choice but to cut the nerves one by one, causing indescribable pain in each one of them. In spite of this, he can no longer turn back, and with the motivation of imagining his little son, he goes ahead while begging himself not to faint, and after a few seconds with all his strength, he manages to free himself from the rock. Like us, Aaron is in a state of shock, seeing one of his limbs trapped in the rocks while he is freed, and he will have to leave it there in order to survive. He quickly manages a tourniquet with the things he has, and despite the pain, takes all his things, but before he leaves, he takes a picture of the part of his body he will leave in that crevice, and says goodbye to that place. Thank you. So he takes his rope and starts to climb out of the cave, and due to the excitement, he screams like never before to get out of the place where he almost died since days ago. From the top, he sees that at the bottom there is natural water, so he makes his best effort to climb down the huge rocks with only one arm. And when he gets there, he jumps into the puddle without caring that the water doesn't look so clean. Then he advances under the sun, looking for the exit in the middle of the huge desert and putting all the strength he has left to survive. But it seems more and more difficult because he is really in his last moments. Suddenly, he sees in the distance the silhouettes of a group of people, so he tries to call their attention with cries for help. And they finally go for him. It is a family who are surprised to see him, but still help him with some water while he tells them what he has lived in recent days. And although they advise him to rest a little, Aaron just wants to go ahead to see his family. These people guide him to a rescue group that have been looking for him for days, and soon after we see a helicopter arrive that finally rescues him. Later, we see Aaron being interviewed by many journalists, 
living new experiences and swimming without one of his hands, being seen by his family and friends. In real life, we find out that Aaron's premonition came true because he met his wife Jessica three years after this and together they had a son named Leo. And nowadays, Aaron continues to climb and explore canyons despite what he experienced. But now he always leaves a note where he stays and the place he will visit. That was 127 hours. Don't forget to comment what movie you would like me to recap. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video.